Hello guys and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name's Conor O'Keefe. I'm a goalkeeper playing my football in Sweden. And in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys my top tips on how to save 1v1s. Now over the years, I've had a lot of comments and a lot of questions regarding 1v1 saves. What's the best approach? What technique should I use? When is the optimum situation to use each technique? So I thought in today's video, I would try my best to answer each of those questions. In the modern game, being good at 1v1s is very important as a goalkeeper. It's an area of goalkeeping that I do a lot of work on in practice and therefore on the pitch, it's become a big part of my game. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about what I've learned from my experience but I'll also be using some research data from leading goalkeeper coaches and goalkeeper analysts to hopefully provide a little bit more detail. So the first question that we need to answer is what is a 1v1? Now most of us will have the understanding that a 1v1 is pretty much a player versus a goalkeeper in a shooting situation. But that can be presented in many different formats. It could be a player breaking through the defence and being completely on his own. Or perhaps the ball ricochets in the box and lands between the goalkeeper and the striker. Or maybe it's even a cross or a cutback to a free man at the back post. Therefore, if there are many different situations that can be classed as a 1v1, that also means there are many different techniques that you can use to save a 1v1. And in my experience and my opinion as a goalkeeper, there are four main techniques that you can use. The spread save, the block save, the smother and the wait and react. Now the first technique is the spread save. Typically the spread save is when a goalkeeper comes off their line, tries to make themselves as big as possible, splits their legs, widens their arms, and tries to create an X or a star shape. Made famous by goalkeepers like Joe Hart, the aim with the spread save is to get as close to the point of contact as you can. Make your body shape as big as possible and cover as much of the goal as you can. The spread save is a personal favorite of mine. It's one that I use quite a lot. And from my experience, there are a couple of points that can help when you're either trying to learn the spread save or improve your spread save. One is flexibility. If you have a good range of movement, especially with your legs, it will mean that you're able to cover a greater area of the goal. It's important to also have mobility and flexibility in the upper body, especially with your shoulders, but flexibility with the groin, the hamstring, the quads can really mean that you can get a proper split shape. And that in turn can also mean that the gap between your legs can be less, which is one area of vulnerability where the striker could potentially score if you're not able to get low enough to the ground. Another point with the spread save is to try and stay square on. As a goalkeeper, if you're nervous about the contact with the ball and you perhaps turn your head and take your eyes away, that in turn can lead to your chest turning and suddenly the shape becomes a lot smaller. If you're able to stay square on, keep your chest square on and keep your arms wide, that enables you to cover more of the goal and means there are less gaps where the ball could get through. The next 1v1 technique is the block save, or some people call it the K save. Now the aim with the block save is for the goalkeeper to get as close to the point of contact as possible, and then to create a compact shape, to drop the knee, to put the arms wide, and to try and create a shape that has no gaps for the ball to go through. You can see a similar shape sometimes in cricket, where people use the long barrier, but by dropping the knee, the aim is to try and minimize that gap between the legs. Again, like the spread save, it is very important that the head and the chest don't turn because like last time, if that's the case, it minimizes the overall shape of the goalkeeper and the amount of the goal that they're covering. With the block save, you're also able to use your arms to fill the gaps that are left around the shape created by your knees. So based on which knee is higher, the arm on that side will be slightly higher, whereas on the side of the body where the knee is dropped, that arm will be a little bit lower. The next technique is the smother technique. Now the smother is when the goalkeeper dives out at the feet of the striker. Your feet go to one side and you're diving across the other side. With this technique, you can either try and use the hands to be completely behind the ball, or you can use one hand to stay above to try and cover the area above the smother. It can also be used as an interception as well as a save. So if the attacker is in on goal, takes a slightly longer touch, you may be able to rush out and use the smother technique to get to the ball first before the attacker. Now the smother technique may be the reason why most people say that goalkeepers are crazy. It's a technique where you do have to be very, very brave. You're diving head first into an area where everyone else is using their feet. But from my experience, a key point with the smother is to attack the ball with speed and power. If you're hesitant or unsure, that's normally where injuries occur. But if you come in quickly, if you come in with power, if you make sure your hands are 
completely behind the ball and that it doesn't slip through, the smother technique can be extremely effective. As a younger keeper, I was also taught that if you're using it, especially as an interception, shouting keepers or shouting your name as loud as you can can sometimes put off the attacker too. So that might be something that you wanna use. But as I said, it's a brave technique that can be used as a save or as an interception. And finally, the fourth technique is the wait and react. Based on the 1v1 situation and a number of different factors, like the positioning of defenders, the distance from the goal, the control of the ball, etc. As a goalkeeper, you might decide not to make a premeditated barrier, but instead to back off, to wait and to react to the shot. Again, in my experience, there are a couple of points that can help with this technique. If you decide to hold off, to wait and to react to the shot, it's very important that you hold your ground. Stay big and control the angle. You're in charge of the situation. If you've made the decision, stick with it. Don't come and go back. Select where you wanna be, get your positioning right and hold. And the next part is trust your reactions. Don't guess and go where you think the strike is gonna go. Yes, there might be factors that you're able to read in order to get there a little bit earlier, but it's important that you don't commit too soon and guess and go to ground. Trust your reactions. Read the situation, but whichever shot they choose, use whichever technique you think is most suitable and make the save. So now that we've introduced those four different techniques, it's important for us to discuss when you should use each of those techniques, which situation favors which technique. And to help do that, I'm gonna use some data that I've personally used as a goalkeeper to help me improve my 1v1 saves. And that's data that was collected, organized, and presented by goalkeeper data analyst, John Harrison. Now, John is brilliant at the statistical analysis of the goalkeeping position. If you don't already, and I'm sure many of you already do, make sure you go and follow him on Twitter. I'm gonna put up his tag right here. Go and have a look at his page, because as I said, it's very, very good analysis of statistics for goalkeepers. And whether you're a goalkeeper or a coach, there's gonna be something in there that you can take and help to improve your game. But John has done a great piece of work on 1v1s, analyzing which is the statistically most effective technique to use in different situations. Now, statistics don't show the full picture. You guys know that, I know that, but they can definitely help when you need to make a decision. So I'm gonna show you guys a model that John has built, which can hopefully give a little bit more detail when we're thinking about which technique we should use in which situation. So if you look at this first slide, John has collected all the 1v1s from the 2019-2020 Premier League season. As you can see, the total number of 1v1 situations was 633. And there are a large number of both saved 1v1s in white and not saved 1v1s in red. John's model also shows that 35% of all goals scored in the 2019-2020 Premier League season came from 1v1 situations. So that just shows how important it is for us as goalkeepers to know what we're doing with 1v1s. So if we go back to our first technique, the spread technique, this slide shows us the save probability of using the spread technique. You guys will be able to pause this if you wanna have a closer look, but basically, darker green is a higher probability of making a save using the spread technique. And moving from green to yellow to red, darker red is a lower probability of making a save using the spread technique. That doesn't mean that you can't make a save using the spread technique in one of those darker areas, but based on the numbers, it is most effective to use the spread technique in the areas of the box where it is darker green. So as you can see from John's data, the spread technique is most effective when used in close range central 1v1 situations. And it is least effective when used in long range 1v1 situations or wide area 1v1 situations. Moving on to our second technique, the block save or the K save. As you can see from the slide, the darker green areas where you have a higher save probability using the block techniques are in the wider areas of the box. And the darker red areas where you have a lower probability of making a save using the block technique are in central and long distance areas of the box. As John has noted on the slide, given that the block save is a compact shape and only covers a narrow portion of the goal, it's most effective when used for close range, wide area 1v1s. Similarly, with our third technique, which is the smother technique, given that the smother technique is vulnerable to chipped or curled finishes around the goalkeeper, as you can see from the darker green, it is most effective and has the highest save probability when used for close range, wide area 1v1s. 
However, for me, this is where statistics doesn't sometimes show the full picture. From my experience as a goalkeeper, and I'm sure it's similar with you, we know that in a 50-50 situation, the smother technique can be very effective, regardless of where that is in the box. However, that is reliant on making sure that you get to the ball first before the attacker. So this data isn't saying that you shouldn't use the smother technique if it's not in the wide, close range area, but it's still information that may help you to make a decision in the moment. And finally, for our fourth technique, which is the wait and react technique, we can see that the technique is most effective and has a higher save probability when used against longer range 1v1s. And therefore, on the other hand, the darker red zone shows that it's least effective and has a lower save probability when used for close range central 1v1s. And as you can see from John's notes on the side of the slide, that is due to the fact that the technique relies on reaction time. The more reaction time that you have, the more effective this technique is. And as we spoke about before, dictating the 1v1 and forcing the striker into a proper finish can help to decrease the chances that they will score, especially if you're using that technique when the distance is longer. So as we can see from this final slide, John has pulled all that data together and used it to break down the 18 yard box and to show which is the optimum decision strategy to use based on where the 1v1 is occurring within the 18 yard box. For longer range 1v1s, the data suggests that the optimum technique to use is to wait and react. For closer range central 1v1s, the data suggests that the optimum technique to use is the spread technique. And finally, the data suggests that the optimum technique to use for closer range wider area 1v1s is the block save. Now, as I said before, statistics don't always paint the full picture. But when I first saw John's research and the model that he created, it really helped me when I was deciding which technique to use. It's very important, first of all, that you practice each technique. It's all well and good knowing which technique to use, but you need to be able to use it effectively. But once that's the case and you're confident in your ability with each of those techniques, Personal experience from training and games, watching professional goalkeepers analysing their techniques and then also using data and research like John's can hopefully help you to make the right decision in that split moment. But I hope that this video helped to show how to save a 1v1 and brought you some value. A big thank you to John Harrison for letting us use his data within this video. If you don't already follow John, make sure you go and follow him on Twitter. As I said, loads of great statistical analysis of goalkeeping. But I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit that like button. It would help us out a lot, help us to reach as many goalkeepers as possible. And if you haven't already, click subscribe and come and join the Keeping Goals Union. This week's Patron of the Week is Jeremy Bruton. Jeremy, thank you so much for supporting us. We wouldn't be able to make these videos without patrons. So as a thank you, here is your Keeping Goals shout out. But that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next week for the next episode of Keeping Goals. But have a great week. Look after yourselves. Keep chasing improvement as always. And I'll speak to you in a bit.